Roundhouses tend to be a British phenomenon in prehistory. They come into being at the end of the Neolithic period when the change in the use of the woodland dictates the change in the housing and we shift from rectangular buildings to roundhouses. Nobody's entirely sure of all the reasons but we think it's probably because the uh, use of the woodland changes and the type of wood being produced. Now the roundhouse is a very comfortable building, uh, very long technology. They were in use for 3,000 years from the end of the Neolithic up to and into the Roman period. To build a roundhouse, you start with holes in the ground. This acts as scaffolding. The main posts of the building are placed into the holes and packed around to keep them upright. The next section is the top of the wall. To maintain a surface for building the roof on and to add to the strength of the wall, you build what is called a wall plate, and that is horizontal pieces linking the tops of the posts together to create a circle right around the top of the wall. The infill of the wall is wattle and daub. Everybody knows the phrase, but not everybody knows what it is. Wattle is woven wood. In this particular case, we are using willow because it's available locally. It's woven into the wall like basket work. It adds an enormous amount of strength into the wall and makes it so strong you could actually run a vehicle into it and not damage the wall itself. To weatherproof it, to keep the rain and the wind out, the wall is then covered with daub. This is a mixture of soil and clay, animal droppings traditionally, as well as vegetable matter of some kind, hay or straw. The traditional way of mixing daub is in a hole in the ground where you throw all the ingredients in, throw a bucket of water in, you take your shoes and socks off and jump in. And it's actually trodden under the feet. It's plastered onto the wall, half thrown so that it actually goes between the pieces of wattle. And it's put on the inside and the outside of the wall to, uh, to complete flat surfaces that can be decorated. The roof itself goes onto the top of the wall plate and we start with three primary rafters. From the first three primary rafters, your second three rafters are then put in place individually. So you have six primary rafters then complete on the roof. Once all the rafters are in place and pegged, the next stage is to create the purlins. Now the purlins are horizontal bands of material. We'll be using the willow to do this and it gives you the surface that supports the thatch. You start at the bottom of the roof and the purlins are lashed, usually using a square knot, it's a very secure, tight knot, and square lashed onto the rafters. Two main sources of thatch, one is straw, which is the leftover wheat from the harvest, and the second source is reeds from the sides of the rivers. And in this location, because of the amount of water we have here, we're going for a reed thatch. The thatch is laid in layers working your way up the roof and of course the thatching gets faster the further up you go because the cone is getting smaller. When you get to the top of the roof you thatch it completely, you go to a point off the top of the roof. There is no hole in a roundhouse roof. Not only does it let water in but it also increases fire risk. You would actually end up with an up updraft through the hole which would suck sparks off your fire. And the way the thatch works, as far as waterproofing is concerned, when the rain hits the thatch, it actually runs down the individual pieces of thatch and drips to the piece underneath it, and eventually off the bottom of the roof. And it's very important that the pitch of the roof is maintained at about 45 degrees. Any shallower, and the rain tends to penetrate into the roof instead of running down it. Any steeper than 45 degrees, and you're building a roof that is taller than needed and uses a lot of excess material.